market setup. And we've got various setups, but you know, in this one here, baseline plus co uses 41 markets. So there's 41 markets over the entire body. And that's, you know, we set up a person. I've got to say, like, the, the one with motion capture, the big thing is like actually getting set up takes a while. Like it takes a good hour or two just to get um, the performance ready for the very first performance. Um, which is typically why when we do a capture, um, like your seminar goes for three hours, but we'll ask you, we'll usually ask you to stick around for longer than that. Just because, you know, it takes an hour to two hours just to get set up and then you'll need time afterwards to actually get your performance. Um, but yeah, this is 41 markers. And so one thing I want to point out is when you're thinking about what your performance is going to be, I would say avoid, unless you're a complete masochist and you enjoy punishing yourself, <laughs> avoid having people like rolling on the floor. <laughs> because the thing is, is like, so you can afford to lose a marker or two, right? But once, if people roll on the floor, what happens? Uh, I mean, yeah, you saw it. Like you saw it with the shoe. Like, like having the shoe in my hands, so the camera's losing the marker. Um, like, yeah, you know, the cameras drop down one by one until the marker just disappears. And when that happens, um, you know, that part of the body goes funny. Like something that you'll see all the time um, is like you get hand swaps. Like where someone will be walking along, and you know, the hand looks normal, but then all of a sudden it goes like that, and then they just walk around like that for like five minutes. Um, and if that's, uh, even in the best of times, that stuff just happens. Um, and that's usually what you have to clean. And that's like the cleaning part. That's what you use Moto for, to clean those kinds of things. But basically, you don't want to spend much time cleaning. You know, you want to get out of the cleaning and get to the actual, like, creative animation part of it in Maya. So when you're thinking about your captures, um, I'm not saying not to, like, think outside the box. But just think about nice, clean movements. Like, there's no reason why you can't do a dance or a nice piece of performance. Um, but whatever you do, just yeah, try not to think about like lying down or hugging. Like, you know, you get two characters, they hug each other, and then like when they unhug, um, they're all stuck to each other. Um, you know, because the markers are swapped between the performers and like. It's like funny watching the heads kind of like, like that <laughs> and things like that. So, yeah. Um, so this is your volume. You generally say you get good coverage inside the volume. Um, and you can go a little bit out of it. You're just going to have to experiment on the day and go, oh, do I need to go in here? And if I do, like how much you know, cleaning am I making for myself? Kind of thing. Um, it's okay. See this? These are perfect because there's no back on them, so you're not including all the markers that are on the back. Uh, so you can have people sitting down, uh, and even like sitting at a desk and stuff. Um, so you can, you know, you can still basically capture anything you want. It's just up to you guys to figure out what you want that to be. Uh, you know, what what kind of performance do you want to like create for your animation? Um, and that's, you know. That's what Jack's good at. Uh, he's great to run ideas by, and he'll have great advice for you. Um, so, yes, I think that's almost everything I want to talk about just in terms of this stuff. The last thing I want to talk about is occupational health and safety. Uh, OHS. So, yes, think of this as your OHS induction. Um, so basically, this is a performance space. Uh, it's a you know it's a it's a performance space, and performance spaces come with you know certain safety guidelines. So, all right, what's the first one? Okay, the very first one I'm going to mention, which is also the last one I'm going to mention, is basically common sense. Um, so being in a performance space, you know things can happen, <coughs> like you know uh, accidents can happen. Um, so in terms of common sense, like if you see a hazard, if you see a hazard, um, don't just 
like being, it's not just a case of like seeing the hazard going, okay, I should avoid that hazard. It's, it's almost more a case of like, okay, what can I do, what can I do about the hazard? Like, you know, the most obvious one is a tripping hazard. Like if, because you know, we'll pull gear out, like if we've got like, if we've got crash mats, um, but you know, we'll have broomsticks and ropes and stuff, and it can get a bit messy during the day, and like, you know, someone might like leave a bundle pile of rope, like something that you think is fine, but someone could actually like, you know, you'll have a director going, okay, that's great. Okay, yeah, they'll keep going, that's good. They'll keep going, and there'll be a rope behind them, and they'll trip over it as they're walking backwards, like, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, common sense, like, pick the rope up and, you know, put it, put it away, or just put it, like, you know, out, you know, at a safe distance away. Um, and actually, the other thing with common sense, this is an important thing, but the performance. So whoever ends up like you know, you know, getting into a suit and doing performance, um, like basically, it's, it's if you're not comfortable with doing something, um, then you don't need to do it. Like no one should force you to do anything that you're not comfortable with doing. Like if someone asks you to like, you know. Um, you know, someone asks you, oh, can you do, can you do power wheels? Can you do backflips? Um, you, you can't be comfortable doing that kind of stuff. Don't do it. And in fact, actually, to be honest, no backflips. <laughs> Period. Okay? Like, if, I'm just going to say for now, no stunts. No real stunts. Um, because if you do want to do stunts, you've got to go through a whole process. Like, you have to write a short paragraph of what you're intending to do. You have to detail who your performer is that's going to do it. Um, you, and your performer has to show that they have the skills and knowledge to actually do it. So, you know, we do, people do do stunts here, but they usually find like an actual gymnast who's trained as a gymnast and is current as a gymnast to actually come and do it. And pretty much the same with dancing as well. Um, so, if you guys can find someone who, if, got something really cool in mind because you've got a friend who can do that stuff like I think last year someone had a friend who you know worked in the circus uh, and they came in and they could do amazing stuff and we were happy to let them do it because they were actually qualified to do that stuff um, so that's this but yeah they have to go through that process where you know they describe what they're doing uh, they talk about why that person can do it and then we actually have to send it up to um, you know we have to send it up to Brad technical services who like to improve them. Um, but yeah, and same thing, like if someone's pushing you to do something um, like that's emotionally intense that you're not comfortable with. Like if you're a great actor, you should be fine with that stuff. But if you're, you know, if you're a beginner, if you're being pushed, and if you're not comfortable with it, you just say I'm not comfortable with doing that. And, and people shouldn't like push you on. So that's another part of the whole common sense, or H&S thing. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, there's some admin, or h &S stuff. All right, who can tell me where the fire extinguishers are? Look around, there's two. Okay, yeah. There's one over there, uh, and then there's one over there, uh, which is behind all that stuff. And not very easy to actually. Um, but we kind of that up. Um, so, and I've got to say, like, this safety cage here, it's locked, and, it and if, it's, if it's open, don't be tempted. See those ropes? Um, they're under really high tension. Uh, and they hold all this stuff up. And basically, it's just a no-go area. The same with um, over there, basically. Uh, there's a workshop, uh, you know, to get to the costume, you have to pass through the workshop, but once again, Try not to go into the workshop. So this sort of it's all the OHS ticking of the box things. Um, and now in the event of an accident, so in the event of an accident, uh, you're required to like call um, to call the nurse, basically. So even even if you even if you have like the smallest of sprains, like if you're like doing a little run in here and you haven't warmed up properly. Uh, we'll make sure that you go warm up, whoever does the performance. If you haven't, for some reason, you haven't warmed up properly, and it's just the smallest of sprains, and if anything, you're more embarrassed about it than anything else, 
Um, we're still calling it. Safely, like um, you know, we've got we do have crash mats, pulling them out. Uh, you know, if there's any kind of a fall that's involved. But you know, I've got to say, like every year, like students go, oh, I'm going to do like a fighting scene. Um, but I'd like to push you guys to not do something as obvious and bland as a fighting scene. Uh, unless you've got actual proper fighters, fighting scenes never look good anyway. <laughs> you know? Um, try for comedy. Try for... Acting. Acting. Actual drama. Because we have the the cameras now, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Two cameras? Um, Tested and working? And we working? Do. We've got facial. Good. Um, oh, I haven't mentioned that. But yeah, in addition to the bodies, um, we also have facial capture. And you guys are going to be going through the whole process of like how you marry the two together. Um, so yeah, you can like being able to capture facial means that you can really you don't have to do mine. Blank faces. Well, actually, you could do mine because the face itself still speaks a lot without talking. Um, but yeah, thanks for mentioning that. But is there anything else? Uh, um, one thing that I've also heard mentioned, even if you do have a crash mat, it's also prudent to put an anti-slip mat underneath the crash mat. Yes. Because we've had incidences where people have landed on the crash mat and the crash mat has not stayed still and, and slipped out from underneath them and they just took it full on the ground. So yeah. what, what, what Gerard's showing you now is an anti-slip mat, which is really helpful when you have props, that if you do accidentally, for whatever reason, fall down, that the mat won't run away and not really catch you for under my watch I've got to say and I still feel bad about it. Um, yeah where a person came off a trampoline and they landed on here and it slides like that. And you know that was a small one. Um, but it really went out and they like they landed on their um, oh no they landed here on the top of their neck. It wasn't good for them. Um, so yeah this is very slippery but if you it's it's done with slip pattern. It's great. I can do that and nothing can happen. So yeah, that kind of thing. And that comes back to common sense, guys. Can't huh? see that video finished common sense. Um, it's like it is, like think something through and don't be in a rush. Like take those little extra precautions. Like we all are with the coronavirus. Uh, so, yeah, any questions? <laughs> yes, we had to limit today to 500 people. <laughs> no, um, the... The question was, do we need to draw dots on our faces? Yeah, so, yeah, the question was, how does the motion, how does the facial capture work? Um, no, we've got these, we have head rigs, we have various head rigs. Um, but what sits in the front of the head rig is we actually, believe it or not, we use iPhones. 
iPhones, the new iPhones, um, the iPhone Xs and above, they have a, they've got a special sensor on them. They've got a depth camera. And I've got to say that personally, as someone who likes using Android, because Android is much easier to program for, um, I'm very sad that Google and Android is not really interested in depth sensors. But the depth sensor basically gives you uh, three dimensions. It gives you 3D, because um, you've got depth. Um, and, you know, uh, as soon as they brought it out, um, people who are into motion capture went, hang on a second, this camera's got a, this phone has a depth sensor on it. Can we use it for facial capture? And the answer is yes. Uh, and there's a really nice solution out there which um, shows you your face. Um, in fact, hang on, I'll run downstairs. Yeah. Just stay here. I'll just run downstairs. Okay, so cool. I'm going to see it.